Minecraft as a game is nearly 12 and a half years old. If it were a person, it would almost be a teenager now. I feel attacked. Given how long Minecraft has been around, it should come as no surprise that the game hasn't always been the most stable. I'm looking at you, Minecraft 1.14. Java Edition has seen the release of nearly 900 updates, including snapshots, and in almost every instance, dozens of issues get addressed. Of the nearly 41,000 reported issues for Minecraft Java Edition via Mojang's current bug reporting service, only about 1-3% to of them are valid, non-duplicate crash reports, and most of those crashes either can't be reproduced, just are not interesting enough, like llamas with a strength value of 0 crashing the game, or are just plain dumb. One example being that Minecraft crashes if you throw a custom fireball with an absurdly high explosion power. Like, if you intentionally overwhelm the game far past the point of sanity, yeah, it's gonna crash. However, of the roughly 700 unique and valid crash reports that I investigated, I believe I found a list of 50 that are absolutely worth their own video. My only requirement is that the game must crash for a specific reason, and in one form or another, these items have to be funny, or at the very least, interesting. On top of the screen will be an ID for that crash's bug report. If you want to know any more information about any one of these items, like exactly which versions these crashes occurred in, just give that ID a Google search. Don't try any of these glitches on worlds that you care about, as many, if not most of them, render the worlds they occur in inoperable. If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing for more. With all of that out of the way, let's check out 50 ways that Minecraft used to crash in past versions of Minecraft. Today's video is brought to you by MC Pro Hosting. Check out any one of MC Pro Hosting's One plans, which allow for you to pay for one server, but swap between any compatible game of your choosing on the fly without having to pay for multiple servers. They have all kinds of plans to suit your needs, and they also allow for you to host a Minecraft server that both Java Edition and Bedrock Edition players can play on at the same time, and you can get 25% off your first order with the link in the description down below. Okay, here we go. Number one, the biggest nether portal that you can craft in Survival Minecraft puts the obsidian frame at 23 blocks wide, 23 blocks tall. However, using the fill command, you can make portals even bigger than that. For a little while before 1.16 was released, making a portal bigger than 32 by 48 could crash the game, with the likelihood of a crash increasing as the portal got bigger. Number two, casting a fishing rod into a nether portal and reeling it in. Number three, some of the crashes on this list relate to a change in 1.13 called the flattening, where among other things, numeric item IDs were properly removed from the game. And in one of those versions, having a skeleton kill a creeper, which is required to get most music discs in the game, instead of potentially getting the best music disc in the game, Minecraft would instead crash. Number four, feeding a dolphin in Minecraft causes it to lead you to treasure. But for quite a while, feeding a dolphin on a world where structures were disabled, the internal server would crash as the dolphin would have nowhere to take you to, and a check had not been yet implemented to handle this situation. Number five, Having a bee sting you while your 3D model is loaded, either by opening your inventory or playing in third-person view, the game would crash. This is going to take a while, so let's speed things up. Number 6. Creating a spawner minecart that spawns spiders would crash the game as soon as a spider jockey, aka a skeleton riding a spider, would spawn. Number 7. While you can right-click on spawner cages with any spawn egg to change what mob appears from that spawner, at one point in time, right-clicking on the cage with a slime or magma cube egg would cause the game to immediately crash when attempting to render the mob inside that cage. Number 8. At a much earlier point in time, putting a default spawn egg into a spawner, obtainable by just giving yourself a spawner egg without any NBT information in the command, would also crash the game. Number 9. 
While glitches like this are a little bit silly, this is my video, my rules. Using commands, you can spawn any mob stacked on top of any other mob, but during a few snapshots, spawning in mobs with a slime or magma cube riding them would cause the game to crash. Number 10. During about the same period of time, summoning a skeleton riding a parrot or a turtle would also result in the game crashing after a short period of time. Number 11. When Wolfie Mario reported this bug, they provided a schematic file for it, allowing for me to use MCEdit to import it into a world, so thanks. For just under three years, creating a spawner cage that spawned paintings would cause the game to crash immediately upon loading up the world. Number 12. This one was referred to me by Half of a Kebab, one of the founders of Omni Archive. In the first iteration of Minecraft Beta 1.7, right-clicking on a sheep was enough to crash the game, probably because this was the first version to implement shears. Number 13. Binding the sneak key to any mouse button and then mounting an entity would crash the game, probably because the message telling you what button to press to get off the mob wasn't set up to handle mouse buttons yet. Number 14. Dropping an anvil onto powered redstone. Number 15. Putting any item with NBT information into an anvil, which could easily be done by control picking a chest, and then attempting to rename it would result in a crash. Number 16. When the piercing enchantment was first introduced, shooting a player with a piercing crossbow while PvP was disabled would crash the server, resulting in everyone on the server timing out after a short period of time. Number 17. Committing die with a bow and arrow, any form of harming potion, or TNT would result in a crash. Number 18. Putting any record disc, not just the best one, into a jukebox would result in absolutely everyone within range of the jukebox crashing. Number 19. Breaking a villager's point of interest on the wrong tick, which could be done pretty easily by trapping a villager, followed by placing and breaking a profession block, caused the game to crash. Number 20. Minimizing the game when the server disconnect window was displayed. Moving right along. Number 21. Using a colon within a command after a slash or another colon. Number 22. Holding shift and pressing down without selecting a server. Number 23. Having a scrollable server list, selecting a server, holding shift, and moving it all around the list. It's inconsistent, but sometimes when a certain item reaches the bottom of the list, the game would just crash. 24. Entering just a colon into the multiplayer direct connection menu without any other characters present would crash the game. 25. This is the only item on the list that I couldn't personally replicate, and here's why. Having someone stay on a server for more than 24 hours would crash everyone on that server since skins would only remain authenticated for 24 hours. I can't replicate this one because Mojang do not authenticate skins for Minecraft 1.7.7 anymore. They do in 1.7.6 and 1.7.8, but not 1.7.7. Interesting. Number 26. This one lasted for over four years. Pressing an inventory manipulation key, like Q or 1 through 9, and also pressing an item manipulation key at the same time within large chests. If pressed at the exact same time, the game would crash. Number 27. This one I found online by just searching around, but in beta 1.7, Pressing a sticky piston into the same powered redstone line that just powered it would result in the world crashing, followed by the game itself. Number 28. This one's tricky since this block disappears after just a few moments of existing, but having a 2011 April Fool's lock chest pushed into your head by a piston resulted in a crash. 29. Speaking of block ID 95, giving yourself block ID 55, 64, 71, or 95, which were the IDs for the block form of redstone wire, wooden doors, iron doors, and the 2011 April Fool's lock chest specifically, you would get a crash. And number 30. This one's a tricky one. 
having blocks drop invalid items, which was doable in these versions by using a silk touch pickaxe to break a lit redstone lamp, would not only result in a crash, but if you were unlucky, or if you paused the game on the same tick that the block broke, the game would be unable to load that chunk upon re-entering the world, which would result in the chunk getting deleted and regenerated. So, 30 down, 20 to go. While number 31 isn't strictly speaking a crash, it might as well be considered one. If you have photosensitivity issues, turn your head away for this item. In Minecraft Alpha 1.1.1, which only a handful of people ever acquired when it was new, remained lost for only 10 years after the fact, and was only found again recently, a video for which can be found here, depending on the GPU that you had, your entire screen, not just Minecraft, would turn gray upon loading this version. On AMD GPUs, your Minecraft window would begin flashing red repeatedly. I wasn't able to replicate this bug personally because it just doesn't happen on my NVIDIA GPU. Number 32. Generating a super flat world without any information within the preset window would cause the game to crash once the world generation window showed 100%. Number 33. Placing a snow layer on top of a fence gate. Number 34. Shift right clicking on a shulker box while you're holding bone meal. Number 35. Creating a super flat world over 250 blocks tall with structures enabled. 36. Creating a super flat world that includes the ocean monument tag within the preset. 37. Having a scaffolding block fall onto a shulker box. The moment that it lands on the shulker box, the game would crash. 38. Having a hopper minecart fall into the void. The moment that its coordinates went negative, the game would crash. 39. Placing a shulker box at coordinates 0x, 0y, 0z. Interesting. Number 40. This one took a while to actually crash the game, but spectating someone as they're either eating or blocking with a shield could result in a crash. 10 more items to go. 41. Spectating an entity that is submerged underwater. 42. Loading a map within an item frame while no other player has that map within their inventory at all pretty interesting crash scenario since it can easily happen by placing a map within an item frame in survival mode, though it only existed for one snapshot. Number 43. Item frames existing on walls at all. Number 44. Flying straight up or straight down while using a Riptide Trident or by using an Elytra with fireworks. The bug report said that this would crash the game within the nether and the end dimensions, but I didn't observe that behavior. Either way, it boots you out of the world and will do so repeatedly upon re-entering the world for a little while, so as far as I'm concerned, that's a crash. Number 45. Teleporting to invalid coordinates, possible in 19w13b by summoning an ender dragon, which resulted in its coordinates being NAN, which stands for not a number. Teleporting to NAN used to be possible in older versions of Minecraft and resulted in some pretty interesting things, a video for which you can find here. Number 46. This one is similar to before, but in a few snapshots in 2013, you could actually just straight up teleport to NAN coordinates, which in these versions would result in the game crashing. 47. Using relative coordinates with the spawn point command to set your spawn point beyond 30 million blocks. When you would respawn, the game wouldn't outright crash, but your character would become stuck forever. Number 48. Again with the respawn command, but this time setting your spawn point anywhere, but with an angle so high that the game would interpret that angle as NAN, which Minecraft allowed for you to do for a few versions. Upon respawning, the game would boot you off the world and render the world unplayable until you fixed it with external tools. 49. Summoning a falling sign block that has its text value set as null. 
And finally, number 50, which is the only item that still works in modern versions of Minecraft and probably always will, given that it's an intentional debug feature. Holding F3 plus C will first copy your coordinates to your computer's clipboard, and then, as you begin holding it, will begin a timer that, at its conclusion, will crash the game.